sorry, every Friday when my mom come back from work and if I don't help her with cooking and all this, things, she said to me, you better learn how to cook now and to do the umu and all this because when you grow up, when you get married, what is your husband going to eat? So that's how they challenge us. What's your husband not going to eat? And we would make jokes about it, you know. <laughs> yeah. So the purpose of the Multicultural Cooking Program is really just to bring people together from, from everyone within the community over lunch. So food is what brings people together. Everybody loves food and it's really just that, um, that conduit to get an understanding of everyone's um, different cultures, their beliefs, um, their stories, sharing, making new friends, building stronger communities. That's, that's the whole purpose of it and, and we do it through, through the lunches. And um, cashew nuts and um, a bit of coconut. Mm -hmm. And to hear people's stories, you know, you just, you hear what other people have gone through on the news sometimes and things, but you actually meet someone and uh, some of the things that they've been through, yeah, it does, definitely makes it real. I'm starting to think back now because I try to forget about what I've been through and, and this program will help me a lot, bringing me back. You know. We use the same ingredients but a different way of cooking it. Yeah. 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 Did I see all coconut milk? Yeah, coconut milk, that's right. And then we've got some seasoning, some salt. Some... Yeah, yeah. See, salt. And she's putting another layer. Ah. Like lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> like a, yeah. Oh, that's Italian, all? Italian style meat. Yes, Solomon yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Slipper and cabbage. So, silver beets, the closest you can kind of find yeah, yes. to it. Yeah, so the program involves every month, on the third Thursday of every month, we have a guest cook come in and they would usually have a friend also cook with them and I would usually have met with them the month before and we would have um, gone through a menu that they have suggested that they would like to cook and we'll go through a little bit of a, um, a shopping list and how we can fit that in and um, then I would purchase all the food for them and they will turn up on the day and we will cook in the kitchen together. I would be there as well. And we usually cook for about 40 people. Sometimes it's always a few more over than that, but it's usually around 40. And we usually do three dishes. A vegetarian dish is, we always have one vegetarian dish and then usually two other dishes. And we busily cook away in the morning. And then the people come in for the community lunch and we all sit down and eat together. And then what happens is at the end of the lunch, I would interview the guest cooks as well and just get a little bit more of a story about you know, why they came to Australia, where they're from, why they chose the dishes they chose. Um. Because back in our country, we women, we always stay at the back. But here it's open up. We can speak, we can engage with others, free freedom of everything, which is good. Um, a lot of people who are new to the community um, would sometimes be feeling isolated and those who weren't new to the community often wanted to reach out to those community members but may not have had a, a way of doing that. And so food was the common way to bring everyone together. Well, the banana was divine today. Oh, awesome. now, I've now tried taro, I've never tried taro. Yeah. Lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's catching up with people that we don't catch up with very often. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, but the food, I love trying the new food. Yeah. The hardest bit is often finding um, people who might like to cook in the program. But I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll sidle up to anyone. You know, the lady in the supermarket. I'll walk up to her and. <laughs> so you find yeah, I find people. Most stalking. Yeah. <laughs> yes, by stalking them. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, in a nice way. <laughs> yeah. So I cast, um, well, I love it, you know, I, I like to get to know people, you know, different cultures. So when she come up with that and she asked me about doing cookings for um, the different cultural way of cooking, I, I, just, I just said yes, because it's nice to get to know other people, you know, around here in um, Wodonga, Albury. Yeah. And I think it's one of the way that you would get to know the community as well.
sometimes she texts me, it gives me more encouragement because it helps me to think, okay, I can do this, all right, okay, that's how I'm going to arrange myself. So it's a lot of helpful from Lou as well, yeah. I think the biggest thing for me at the end of every lunch, when, when all the dishes are done and everything's put away, it's that moment where you get to sit down with the guest cook at the end of the program and say, you did it, well done, everyone loved it, and people have walked by and said thank you, and, and, and I think that person knows that they have really been appreciated and they've really been, they've really been, um, they've made a big influence on other people in the community. So I think that for me at the end of that, at the end of the day when, when the last bit of floor has been mopped and, and you know, it's lovely. Something that, it's, it's brings me encouragement that I don't have to put myself down all the time. I have to, you know, there's something that you can make yourself feel like You'll be okay. You know? Yeah. Here we have Lou holding down the executive position. <laughs> yeah, I get the glory. The glory in here in the dishes, doing the dishes. <laughs>